This is Restoration Bible Church and Ministries. We are a people of excellence living purposefully. And now, here is God's servant, Reverend Tina Balanta, as she brings you God's word. We trust that you will be blessed as you listen. This morning, we're going to be sharing on turning our difficult situations to joyful ones. Turning our difficult situations to joyful ones. Psalm 126. Psalm 126, verses 1 to 6. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dreamed. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then said they among the heathen. That means what was done was so capt- was so outstanding that even the unbelievers had to say something the lord has done great things for them the lord has done great things for us whereof we are glad turn again our captivity O lord as the streams in the south they that sow in tears shall reap in joy he that goes forth and weepeth bearing precious seed shall doubtless come again with rejoicing bringing his sheaves with him Hallelujah. This is a season where we need to start to expect the unexpected. It's a season where we need to start to expect the unexpected, when we need to start expecting God to do marvelous things in our sight, things that we have looked forward to for a long time. This is a season when God is going to be changing the stories of people around. He's going to wipe away the tears of people. And he's going to be changing the clothing of people. Hallelujah. Your faith in God's mercies will enable you leave the season of difficulties for that of possibilities. Your faith in God's mercies will enable you to leave a season of difficulties for a season of possibilities. The mercies of God, the Bible says, they are new every morning. Great is God's faithfulness. Great is God's faithfulness because his mercies are new every day, every morning. The mercy that carries us to the end of the day is not the same mercy we start a new day with. Because the days are different. There are different things God plans for us. So every day as we step into a new day more mercies, new mercies, depending on the mercies we have need of. Those are the things that show up in our lives. Those are the things that God does for us. Psalm 145 verses 8 and 9. Psalm 44 verses 1 to 3. Jeremiah 32 verses 40 and 41. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. The Lord is slow to anger and of great mercy. The Lord is good to all, and his tender mercies are over all his works. A lot of times it's easy to say, but the believing in God is what people sometimes struggle with. It's easy to say God is good. It's easy to say the mercies of God endure forever. The mercies of God are over us. But sometimes when it comes to our own personal lives, when we look at where we are coming from, when we look at the situations we've been through, we sit down and we start asking ourselves sometimes, God, is it really true that your mercies are there over my life? Is it really true that your mercies are new for me every day? There are times we ask ourselves questions like that. But when the Bible tells us about God, it does not tell us that it's an if situation. It just tells us up front. It tells us the way it is. It says the Lord is gracious. The Lord is full of compassion. Whether we believe it or not, that is who God is. Hallelujah. That is who God is. So over the situations, over the things that we go through in life, over the difficult situations that face us in life, the challenges that face us in life, God is gracious. God is full of compassion. He is of great mercy. He is of great mercy. That is who he is. He does not change. He is not a man that should lie. He's not a man that will say something today and then tomorrow when you come, you realize that ah, the words God has said, they've changed. God has changed his mind over my... Mm-mm, God doesn't do that. 
Hallelujah. When God says something about us, his children, he means what he says and he makes sure those things come to pass over our lives. So when we go through difficult situations, we need to always remember the mercies of God. Let's remember that even though we might be in tough times, trying times, God will not allow us to remain there forever because his mercies are over our lives on a daily basis. Hallelujah. His mercies over us are new. That's why God will not allow us to remain in difficult situations forever. That's why a time comes when he turns the captivities of his people around. Seasons change. There's no season that is meant to last forever. Right now we're in the rainy season. Come November now, seasons change for us in this part of the world. We get into the Hamatan season. It's dry. It's, it's dusty. But it's a season that affects everybody because once the season changes, everybody under that particular sky feels the effects. The new season that God is bringing, you'll feel the effect of it in the name of Jesus. We have heard with our ears, O oh God, Psalm 44, verse 1. We have heard with our ears, O oh God, our fathers have told us the, deed you, the deeds you did in their days. In the days of old, you drove out the nations with your hand. But them, our fathers, you planted. You afflicted the people and you cast them out. For they did not gain possession of the land by their own sword, nor did your own arm save them. But it was your right hand, your arm, and the light of your countenance because you favored them. The favor of God brought the children of Israel out of different difficult circumstances. It brought them out of a trying period. It brought them into their promised land. The Bible says a land that was flowing with milk and honey was where God brought them into. Why? Because his mercies over their lives were new. Because what he had spoken concerning them, he had made up his mind he was going to pass, bring to pass. And there was no way he was going to change it. There was no way he was going to change it. So when we remember the things God has done for us in the past, it needs to encourage us to keep going on ahead, knowing that the same God who visited us in the past will visit us in our present situations and take us to where he has prepared for us in the name of Jesus. No difficult situation is meant to last forever. No situation is meant to last forever. It's not meant to last forever. That's why it said in verse 6, verse 4, I think, those who, verse 5, those who sow in tears will reap in joy. Those who sow in tears will reap in joy. There is a time when you are sowing in tears. There is a time when you, you are bringing out money to buy fuel and you are crying and I say, God, this well money, we can use it for something else. This well money can go into putting food in the house, putting food on the table. This money we're using to buy fuel, Father, it can go into doing something for us. There are times when you're struggling to do that. But as you do that, as you take care of your regular bills, doing the things that you know you need to do, God will visit you in your own time and need in the name of Jesus. God does not turn his face away on his children. He doesn't abandon them. He sees where we are. The Bible says he sees the sparrows. If his eyes are on the sparrows, what are we that he cannot look at us? God takes care of the birds. In Matthew 6, from 25 to 32, he feeds the birds of the air. He provides even shelter. He provides for them. I have a window in my house that birds like. Birds lay eggs on that, that particular window in the house, and they hatch their eggs on that particular, not once, not twice. I did not invite them, but God showed them. No, it's true. God must have told them in all their wandering around that there's a window in this house that you can go to and you'll be safe from other praise. So every time they are flying around, as they go, they land. Next thing you see, you start seeing um, nests. You start seeing pieces of wood. You start seeing things. And next thing you know, you see eggs. Why? Because God cares about every creature he made. Every creature. If he can care for the animals, you and I are more important than the animals. That's why there is nothing you go through in life as a child of God that your father will forget you. 
There is nothing you go through in your li- in life that he will turn his back on you. As far as you are there as a child of his, God will visit you and cause every difficulty you are going through to be turned into seasons of joy and possibilities in the name of Jesus. When, the, when Jesus was around, a lot of times you'll have the people going around crying, have mercy on me, son of David. Have mercy on me, son of David. Why was it that way? Why were they crying out for his mercy? Because they knew that he was a merciful father. They knew he was a merciful father. They knew that because he was more than able, there was no need they would bring before him that he would not be able to take care of. So whatever your need is this morning, whatever season you find yourself this, in this morning, I want to tell you that the King of Kings who is your father has his eyes upon you. And because his eyes are upon you, he'll cause those things to be turned around in the name of Jesus. Those seasons will be turned around in the name of Jesus. When he turned our captivity around, we were like them that dreamed. We were like them that dreamed. Every season will come to an end. Jeremiah 32 verse 40. But I will make an everlasting covenant with them that I will not turn away from doing them good. What was God's everlasting covenant to the children of Israel? That I will not turn away from doing them good. There are times when people go through things in life and you come to them and you say, look, God is good, God is faithful, God is able to do. And the question that they ask is, if God is good, then why is this happening to me? If God is good, why am I having to cry night and day? If God is good, why am I having to go around begging for food to eat? Why am I having to go around looking for things to, solutions to the problems in my life? God is good is a covenant statement. Because he made a covenant. And God being good means that no matter what the enemy throws at you, come hell or high water, God is good. He remains good forever. He will be good until the end of ages because he is a good God. Simple. He's a good God. God is a good God. His mercies endure forever. God does not change. Which means when he does things in our lives, he does good things for us as his children. He does good things for us. He made an everlasting covenant with them. And that covenant works on our lives. It works on our behalf. So when the enemy throws thoughts at you and says things are happening because you have messed up, because you are not good enough, tell the enemy that that's not it. The covenant God made with me is an everlasting covenant. It's an everlasting covenant. And that covenant is not based on your goodness, on your own goodness as an individual, but it's based on his own nature as the King of kings and the Lord of lords. It's based on his own nature as the almighty God who cares about his people. The Bible says he has tattooed our names, he has written our names on the palms of his hands. When God lifts his hands, he sees your name. And when God sees your name, he sees your needs. When God sees your name, he sees what you are going through. And let me tell you something. As large as our country is in this, as large as our country, as our nation is, there are more than a thousand Igwe's in Nigeria. How many of us agree with that? But when God looks at Igwe, our own Igwe here. God does not confuse him with another Igwe. God does not take the blessings of our Igwe and give it to another Igwe and say, I thought it was Igwe Samuel I was looking at, uh, but it is Igwe Joseph. God doesn't do that. The mercies that belong to you, the good things that belong to you, the things that God has written against your name, they will locate your house and locate your address and you will live to enjoy them in this dispensation in the name of Jesus. God does not throw things away. He doesn't throw his children away. That's why sometimes it looks as if things take time before they locate you, but once they locate you, they know your house and they will stay there. They locate you. 
So God says, I will make an everlasting covenant with them that I will not turn away from doing them good, but I will put my fear in their hearts so that they will not depart from me. Yes, I will rejoice over them to do them good. And I will assuredly plant them in this land with all my heart and with all my soul. With everything that God is, he will plant you where he wants you planted. He will plant you in a season of increase. He will plant you in a season of peace. He will plant you in a season of prosperity. He will plant you in a season where you'll be able to stand up and say of a truth, the God that I serve is a faithful God. All because he has made a covenant on your behalf. And that covenant is an everlasting covenant. It will not be changed no matter what the enemy throws at you in the name of Jesus. So the goodness of God is forever. Zephaniah 3.17, the Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. Zephaniah 3.17, the Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love and he will joy over thee with singing. Hallelujah. God cares about you. That's why God will rejoice over you with singing. When he sees your name, he's rejoicing over you. When he sees your name, he's excited because he knows the things he has prepared for you. And he knows that you are walking into those things, no matter what the enemy thinks about it, in the name of Jesus. You will walk into all that your father has prepared for you in the name of Jesus. Everything that God has created has ears to hear. Everything that God has created, they have ears to hear. So we need to constantly speak and act on the words of God because they will cause the enemy to flee from before you. Constantly speaking and acting on the words of Jesus will cause the enemy to flee from before the believer. Everything that God created, they have ears to hear. I don't know if you've ever heard this saying, where people say, even the walls have ears. Be careful what you say. They'll say, be careful what you say. Even the walls have ears to hear. They might not be saying it in this, um, in this way, but everything that God created has ears to hear. Plants have ears. Stones have ears. Rocks have ears. The soil, they have ears. The soil has ears to hear. Birds have ears. Every animal you see, everything that God created, they have ears. And that same way, your own body, each part of your body hears the words of the Lord spoken to it. So when you are going through situations, we need to learn to make the word of God a part of our daily lives. We need to make the words of God a part of our daily lives. You don't deny what you see, but you deny their ability to control your life. We don't deny what we see, but we deny the ability of God's word, I mean of, of the situation to control our lives. That is why we will always need to speak God's word in every situation. Hebrews 1 verse 3. Hebrews 1 verse 3, John 1, 1 to 3. Hebrews 1 says, Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power. When he had by himself purged our sins, he sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. God upholds all things by the word of his power. I always like to say it this way. Ever since the day of creation or the week of creation, I have not heard God telling the sun to shine. Neither have I heard God telling the moon to shine. I have not heard God telling the plants to grow. I have not heard him telling animals to be alive. Why? Because the day he made every single part of what we see with our eyes, he set something into motion. He set a law into motion. And that law does not need God. In the sense of he doesn't need God to repeat himself over and over. God doesn't need to wake up every day and say, let there be light. 
He doesn't need to wake up and say, moon, you need to shine. He doesn't need to wake up every day and say, Ray, uh, waters, you need to form and become an ocean. He doesn't. He has said it and it's settled. In the same way, the words that we speak, once we speak those words, because they have the power of God in them, those words will go ahead and do what we have declared that they should do. Don't ever get tired of speaking the words of God over your situation and circumstances. Don't get tired of doing that. Because everything we see was created by the word. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. That's John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning, God and his word are one. God and his word were, are one. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. So when you open your mouth to speak, you're only bringing Jesus on the scene. And when you bring Jesus on the scene, the enemy has no choice but to bow. And he'll bow from your situations in the name of Jesus. He'll bow from your circumstances in the name of Jesus. And he'll cause your stressful times to be turned into times of joy and rejoicing in the name of Jesus. The words of God will always make a difference where you are concerned. As we learn to look at the God of our salvation, as we learn to joy in the God who is merciful, ever merciful towards us, whose mercies are new over our lives on a daily basis, God in his mercy will turn your captivities to be turned into a season of laughter and rejoicing in the name of Jesus. Let's rise to our feet this morning, thanking God because he's a faithful God. Father, we thank you for who you are. We thank you, Father, because you are a merciful God. You are a merciful Father. We thank you, Father, because your words are forever settled in heaven. And when your words are settled in heaven, Father, those words have in them the ability to turn situations around. Therefore, I declare this morning over the lives of every single person in church this morning and over the entire church family that difficult situations in our lives will be turned around in the name of Jesus. Situations that have brought tears into the eyes of your children, Father, they will be turned around for their good in the name of Jesus. You are a God that turns captivities. You turn difficult seasons into seasons of joy and praise. We declare that your children will rejoice in this season because of your goodness and your mercies upon their lives in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for visiting your children. Lord, we give you praise. In Jesus' name we've prayed. Thank you for listening to today's message. Do join us same time next week. Follow us on our social media handles, Facebook and Instagram at Restoration Ministries International, Twitter and Mixilar at RBCM Online, and our website is www.rbcmonline.org. You can also be part of our live power park services every Wednesday by 5.30 p.m. and on Sunday by 7 a.m. and 8.30 a.m. respectively at Restoration International Conference Center, RICC, Romanew Extension, Kaduna South. God bless you.